Hey guys, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today, you can see I'm goofing around with the Massimo system. This is the root, which is the base, and these are the Radical 7s, which you can see there's a couple different versions of that. But the reason I have these at home is because I am currently dealing with some touchscreen issues. And I've never really dealt with the Massimo root system. And I've seen them in use. They're actually kind of cool. They have a lot of versatility. But the fact of the matter is, I've seen five or six, maybe even seven units recently, very recently, with touchscreen errors. Or, you know, they just don't have a touchscreen. It's just not working. So I really started digging into it, and I was thinking, what the heck is going on with them? And today, I noticed this. I was walking through a ward and I seen one of these systems sitting off to the side and one of the nurses seemed to have taped a note on the face of the touchscreen of the Radical 7. Well, Radical 7s and the root base here, they, they have capacitive touchscreens and capacitive touchscreens don't like anything on them. They like to be very clean. Um, resistive touchscreens are more lenient to that type of stuff but they're they're damaged when there's impacts on the front of the screen whereas capacitive touch screens they get confused when there's contamination on the front of the screen see the way a capacitive touch screen works is there is a sheet of glass and then right beneath the glass there's a grid it's a transparent grid and then there's a transparent grid behind that and they're separated by a dielectric which creates a capacitor and what it does is it monitors all the lines and then it monitors all these lines. And because it's monitoring two sets of lines, you can have multi-point touch. Not all units support multi-touch, but it is possible, which is what's on your cell phone or your iPad or your touchscreen that's on your computer, like your laptop. Those are usually capacitive touchscreens. So here we have the Radical 7 and uh, it's a very neat looking, uh, normally it's an SPO2 pulse oximeter, but these guys have something called the rainbow set. And the rainbow set is a whole bunch of other parameters that, that you can actually incorporate into this port. It's not just for pulse oximetry. There's a bunch of other stuff you can do. Yes, it can be very expensive, all these probes. Even a typical rainbow set SPO2 probe, when you get the trunk cable plus the probe itself, that's hundreds of dollars. But, in the end, it's a very cool setup, or at least it appears to be. So, I don't know for sure if the contamination, because nurses have obviously a tendency to tape things right across the front screen of the Radical 7, if that is a habit, if they're so casual when it comes to taping something to the front of the screen, then of course, you are going to have an increase in touchscreen problems. That's all there is to it. Now, one of the things that we can do is we can clean them. And I don't know if you can see, but you can see that there is some contamination on the front of that screen. How about this guy? Let's check this guy out. Well, there is. Take a look right here. You see that? There is definitely some contamination right in the middle of the screen. And it looks like maybe it was an impact with contamination. So what do we do about that? Well, let me take a look. So one of the things that we can do is we take these alcohol-based cleaning wipes and we generally guide the user to wiping down their equipment without leaving too much residue on the front of the screen because that will also create this problem. So touch screens if you guys didn't know, are the Achilles heel of almost every medical device. So there's two Achilles heels. One of them is gonna be your power supply. Power supplies are, they're the fault in every medical device. The next thing is touch screens. There's a lot of things that don't need touch screens. And maybe, maybe the Radical 7 is one of them. You can see one version has got hard buttons off to the side. There, these ones here are membrane buttons. You can feel the clickety-clack. They're actually very nice. And membrane buttons generally prevent intrusion of fluids. 
Yes, touch screens are cleaner than those, but the problem with many touch screens is that there's a bezel around the outside which tends to collect extra moisture. So that's one of the reasons why we generally try to get people to use alcohol-based wipes instead of the bleach-based wipes, except obviously COVID, guys. So the thing is, alcohol will usually evaporate as long as they don't soak the device. But these ones here, they seem to have a well-adhered label across the front. So usually touch screens are damaged by impacts, contamination, if they're capacitive touch screens, or fluid intrusion. And that would be around the edges because the edge of your touch screen has got your data cable and it's kind of like a serial cable. It's just a uh, three, four or five wire, something like that. And that cable it will either get bent or fluids will get right where those uh, traces are and it will contaminate the traces and it'll cause corrosion. And the corrosion will wear the traces away because it's just like carbon deposits. It's not actual wires. So usually flexing will wear away at those traces. One of the things, a lot of old medical devices used to have screens that would move around. Well, guess what? Those screens that move around cause ribbon cables to go bad because there are carbon traces on those ribbon cables, not actual wires. So this is almost the same thing. But I don't think that is the problem with the Messimo Radical 7s. I honestly think that it has to do with cleaning and them taping stuff to the front of the touchscreen. So the other thing that you guys should know about touchscreens is usually on many, many devices, the touchscreen semi-calibrates itself when it boots up. That is why on many touchscreens, when you apply power, you put your finger in the middle of it if you want to calibrate the touchscreen because it senses that there's a touch and there's often a secret menu inside many devices which have touchscreens. Now, I'm not sure if that's this one. This one actually has a very, very well put together menu system. Um, maybe I'll do a whole entire video on, on the Massimo uh, root system because it is actually very cool. But as for tonight, I am just experimenting around. I'm cleaning these touchscreens and I have to let them charge up enough to uh, test them when they're not in the dock. Because when they're in the dock, they go into docked mode, which not all of my Massimo units do. I have a Radical 7 here that goes into standalone mode, which shows all the parameters on this screen instead of on this screen. When it's in a standalone mode, it's not talking to the dock. It shows that it's charging, but not all the pins are used when you're charging. So. There is probably something going on with the charge port on the back. But one of the other interesting tidbits about these uh, Radical 7s is on the back of the port, there are spring-loaded pins. And, oh, believe it or not, I think I just found the problem with this one. There is a spring-loaded pin that is bent in. Let's see if I can get you guys a good view of this guy. Because I bet you this happens to other people too. Go figure that I'd find the problem that easily. Okay. Whoop. Okay. So all the pins, except for the middle pin, are in a line. But this very top pin up here, it's recessed. And it's recessed because it's got some sort of impact damage and it has been pushed in. Now, the unique thing about the middle pin on these guys is it is a little bit proud of the other pins on the new model. On the old model, all the pins are equidistant across the entire connector. So what I'm thinking is that the middle pin is probably the ground because they want it to be the first pin that touches and the last pin to disconnect when you're disconnecting this from the base. That's what I'm thinking. I could be wrong, but it usually, like on electrical cords, the ground is going to be the first one to touch and the last one to not touch, okay? So guys, that's what I'm working on tonight. This is my homework, is I'm in here, I'm examining all these touch screens, and I'm seeing what is going on, because, well, obviously this one has got a damaged pin. I can do something about that. 
but the ones that have a damaged touchscreen and they're not booting up into touchscreen, I don't know. Hopefully it's contamination. But if not, then I might have to do a teardown and we'll go into some detail on it because I have four or five units now that are showing that no touchscreen. And I'm, I'm getting all these messages on these units. Every morning, there I find these units laying around that say no bad touchscreen. But now, today, after finding that note taped right across the front of the Radical 7, I think that I'm going to take a look at maybe an improvement on nursing practices. So tomorrow, I'm going to write an email, and I'm going to show the picture of the note taped across the Radical 7. And I'm going to send that out to the nursing committees, and I'm going to tell them nothing should ever be taped to the screen of a touchscreen because when it boots up if it throws an error like if it thinks that you're touching it in some devices it will go into touchscreen calibration mode in other devices it will disable the touchscreen because the last thing you want a device that's touching your patient to do is to automatically start doing things like somebody's doing it with their finger so what happens is when you boot it up if it senses a touch Many devices will throw a, a critical error code or they'll just flat out disable the touch screen. So what we do is we clean the screen really, really well. You dry the screen really, really well. And then you apply it, allow it to charge up to a full battery, and then go ahead and boot the device and see if now you have touch screen. Anyway, guys, I think I've used up enough of your time. I found a use for my Pronk simulator. Works out pretty good. I actually am really digging this system. And uh, I'm going to do a video on this guy very, very soon because I'm playing around with all the different alarm levels and the plethograph and stuff. It's very cool. So guys, my Pronk simulator is helping me here at home test out touch screens. Go figure. <laughs> anyway, guys, thanks for watching once again.